the 3rd of October. Here it's 11.30 p.m. And um, I decided to make a video in which I talk randomly about um, some of the, the, the thoughts that I've had today. I become smarter every day, almost every, every waking hour and sometimes every waking minute. Uh, yeah. This is American common sense that I will not implement for myself as an empirical individual for the reason that I will explain. This is part of, uh, not of the insanity, but here that's rational insanity. Uh, we live an era of revelation, uh, which is the word apocalypse in ancient Greek, for the simple reason, there are many reasons, but one of the reasons is all the world's knowledge is made available in real time on the internet. So everything is being revealed. But in order to, to make this everything intelligible, one has to see a, a structure, a pattern, a shape, one may say, and this is what I have been working on, what I call my, my system. And um, here I just give an anecdote. I try to communicate the ID, which is to exteriorize the process of the mind of God, basically. That's one way of talking. I mean, it's already out there, but to exteriorize the view of the totality of the process that I have incorporated in my mind over the past uh, four years, one might say, since my, my God experience in August 2018. And I know that we are going through difficult times collectively because I carry a knowledge about the nature of reality that I tend to forget on an empirical level, but that once that others realize what I've been trying to communicate, there will be a shift in, in the structure of reality. I don't know when it happens, in the, in the, in the coming days, coming weeks, depending, but eventually, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, about uh, being prepared. I try to share my books in, in now all of my videos, and also the links to my best videos about logic, the importance of the categories, uh, the view of the totality of the process, and the um, the intellectual and spiritual life of the US and the West, which is kind of the phenomenology. But I've realized that. Yeah, so what I do, I, I wanted to talk about ethics. What I do on a singular empirical level, I share my excess of good. The good things that I have in excess, I, I just try to share them which is not really ethical precisely because it, it's not costly. It's just, a, I have too much money, too much knowledge. I'm not sure that knowledge is always good, but I have too much knowledge, too much money, too much intelligence. Although I can be very stupid, I, I, am, I know myself to be very intelligent uh, sometimes. And uh, yeah, so I am, a, maybe that's the good aspect of me. I am uh, in excess of myself, so I, I share myself, uh, my, my good excesses uh, <laughs> with others. So what I do here, it's uh, so I, I buy my groceries ordinarily in a daily life uh, by, by buying organic, uh, mostly uh, locally uh, food from farmers when I can to the minimum to, 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 to sustain a normal lifestyle. And when I do, I share 
my excesses of money with others and encourage them to, to share with those in need. And not, it's very easy to do because it's, uh, it's not costly in a way, but uh, that's what I do. And I don't expect anyone watching this doing anything, but that's what I do. And I know this is part of what I've been thinking, that I've been trying to, to speak the truth or parts of the truth, because the truth, the truth is a totality, etc. But parts of the truth in a gradual manner. That's a determination of quantity, step by step. But I have come to realize that, so I have tried to be honest. This is part of the, the moral conflict that I would like to talk about that I have in me. I have tried, I try to, to, to be honest. I share uh, my address. Uh, I uh, I share the books that I think are important uh, for common sense. Common sense in, is in the middle. I tend to switch uh, from left to right, but that that's what I think is, is is common sense when I'm in a stable mood. And even if I kind of disagree. <laughs> I still promote these books because I know it's it's common sense. Uh, yeah, the, so yeah, I will share randomly some of the ideas that I've had today. I will uh, struggle spiritually against uh, against myself eventually, but against uh, the United States of America and, and the whole world eventually, just to re-establish a, a, a political situation, just in the realm of politics, as long as there are, there are politics where. Charles Murray and Ron Paul are considered common sense, I mean, in the middle. Because my view of America, the United States of America, is a society, this is the view that I have developed over the, the years, and I have, I will talk about it, but in my view, the United States are, are supposed to be a country where, where someone like Charles Murray or Ron Paul, and I could add uh, Daisy, Lu Daisy Luther, I mean, she's not very famous, but she's just, this is the embodiment of, of American common sense, self-reliance, uh, the ability to, 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 to think forward, to, to take care of one's own household, uh, re resourcefulness, and simply common sense intelligence. This should be in the middle. And I am intelligent enough to know that even in the context of America, where, where Charles Murray, Ron Paul, someone like Thomas Sowell, uh, Daisy Luther, um, uh, even partly someone like Jeff Deist. Jeff Deist is switching slightly on the right, but he, he should be, in my view, the, the, the typical common sense American. Uh, maybe slightly on the right, but towards the center. And I know enough that these people, in the view that I have developed about the US over the years, for me, in, precisely, sometimes when I kind of become a little bit stupid, maybe, or uh, delusional, I think, okay, in the US, these are centrist people. Then I check the empirical data and I realize that even for the modern Americans, someone like Ron Paul is considered kind of right wing. Uh, yeah, so I've kind of deluded myself, but yeah, I, I will struggle until this is one of the objectives. Someone like who, who, who can talk normally and peacefully, so that's in the middle, about the problems of the, the, the economic system. I'll pick up my books. Why do I show these books? It's not to... I, I haven't even read them, but it's just to, to encourage people who might watch this video uh, to, to just go on the internet and, and to become aware that there is a problem. And now I try to reformulate what I've been, the idea that I've been sharing, namely a problem exists only because people are unaware of the problem. So the existence of the problem, the educational system, the banking system, crime in America uh, or in, in the Western world at large, and in the world at large, the decline of the standards of, of morality, uh, the decline of the traditional uh, family, the decline of, uh, <laughs> of every institution which is supposed to make a society function, <sighs> coming apart, the decline of white America, the consequence endorsed by Thomas Sowell, an Afro-American who acknowledged 
to discuss the problem of racial violence inflicted upon whites. It, it has to be noted. That's why it's, in my view, in the middle, common sense. And the traditional the traditional um, vision of, 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 of womanhood by American common sense again so yeah yeah what I was saying uh, that yeah, yeah I understand uh, yeah so yeah, the problems these are just some of the problems the banking system crime the educational system there are problems of, of, of the welfare state, uh, the, the, the public morality. I'm not a moralist. I'm just saying that uh, there are problems. That there are problems with me as well, but I'm trying to solve my problems. But uh, they exist. They are made possible and, and wirklich only because the people are unaware that they exist. But once they become aware, the problem, the relationship changes, namely the problem. Let us say, say the example of, 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 of crime. Uh, there, there is rampant criminality in the US and in most Western countries because, because most people are unaware. They, are, they might be aware on an empirical level, but not on a social level. They, they do not know about the statistics. And if they knew, uh, maybe they would get a little bit pissed off. Who is responsible? I'm here to take the blame. That's the good aspect about me. If I have some qualities, I've been pretty critical of myself today, but some of my, my best qualities maybe is that, hey, I'm here to take the blame. <laughs> That's maybe the best aspect. Uh, you can uh, unleash your uh, anger at me or your frustration or... Uh, yeah. I might enjoy it. <laughs> I would like uh, the plan. I don't know how long I will talk. I, I would like to talk about insanity. This, this will be probably the, the, the title of the video, uh, something about insanity. I've been thinking about insanity today. I would I just try to to extract uh, the rational kernel out of the what what I, what I want to say is that yeah, seriously, um, criminality, the educational system, the banking system, uh, the, the welfare state. People might be aware that, that there are problems with these uh, de defective uh, institutions or the consequences of the, the, the defectiveness aspect, the defective aspect of these institutions. But once that they become aware, here is a quantitative change. When more and more people become aware, at some moment, there will be a qualitative change, a change of measure, and they will realize that these problems have existed and still do exist only because the people were ignorant of these problems. But now, just a change of consciousness brings about or will bring about a change in reality, namely when more and more people realize, and this is part of the apocalyptic uh, mood. I mean, here it can be for good. Apocalypse, the revelation uh, can be good or bad, but they, they are not just negativity. Let's hope so. When more and more people realize, but wait a minute, the state, he takes our hard-earned money. We Americans, we work, and the state, he steals our money to feed uh, parasites and and they they bring crime and uh, i will not quote trump but we are encouraging dependency uh recklessness uh, parasitism within our own society with our, our own hard earned hard earned money really we tolerate this we really have become decadent yes partly <laughs> I'm in the mood to laugh, but I have been completely insane for most of the day. But that's why people, if they watch my videos some, some, uh, someday, they will notice probably some radical mood shifts. Now I'm in the joyful mood, but precisely, I will explain. I have been 
really insane, but here in a really uh, negative sense, like completely insane for most of the day. I know partly why, and now I am. I have not published my outburst of insanity because I know that it would have probably negative consequences, but it might happen eventually. I will talk about this later, but here I'm extracting positive vibes. Maybe that's part of my scheming self because eventually if people watch my video, they will say, oh, but he's so positive. Uh, what happens? <laughs> and then they will realize that I have really negative aspects that I'm trying to control, but uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, back to the, yeah, just the welfare state. This is just a singular book. There are many books published about the welfare state, conferences, videos, data, whatever. When people collectively realize, but wait a minute, we have been paying for this nonsense for years. Our tax money uh, for our hard uh, sweat and labor is being stolen from us. Collectively, it's society stealing its own money from itself. It, it's not a, the, the, it's, it's a self-oppressive process. They will realize, but uh, we, we don't want to pay uh, no longer to bring about uh, these genic effects, uh, criminality, single motherhood, uh, welfare, uh, dependency, drugs, and all sorts of the negative effects, which are being documented in a book. Uh, let us take a, a politically correct book with slightly uh, modern sociobiology. So it's, it's politically incorrect, but it's correct nonetheless. It's a German normal. Th then again, th th this should be, it's probably considered right wing because he talks about IQ and race, but it, it should be uh, in the center in Germany. The center in Germany, uh, <laughs> maybe this should be a leftist in Germany. <laughs> that's a joke, that's a private joke. Uh, yeah. Or another book by Mr. Richard Lin. Uh, he talks, uh, he just documents uh, the, the relationship between IQ in each country and some of the, the effects. Uh, I know it's not in this book, but see, life expectancy, uh, child mortality, health expenditure, death rate, and many other uh, social... Uh, social um, population growth, uh, fertility, etc., etc., uh, government expenditure, the, the, the relationship, which is a quantitative fairness. I've made videos about logic. Uh, yeah, so what I'm trying to express is there comes a moment in the coming weeks, I think, the coming weeks or months, I don't know, but probably weeks, on, on a collective first on uh, it will become worldwide because one of the ideas that I'm trying to share is that there's only one world only one worldwide web of consciousness there's only one mind eventually but this mind is splintered fragmented into billions of pieces and the process of spirit is the process of reconstructing the mind of God and it happens predominantly uh, in the Western world and through the mediation of Europeans, anthropological Europeans, that which is called white people. But then white people with a culture, these are real Europeans and it is mostly, almost exclusively through them, that spirit is reconstructing itself. Yeah. And uh, yeah, what I wanted to say that that's one of the reasons, it's, it's, it's the reason that from a strict the level of consciousness, here I speak in ordinary language, the change of consciousness alters the structure of reality. This is an idealist perspective that no one in the world understands, except myself, and I fail to communicate. But uh, yeah, um, I will just explain. I, I I wanted to make this video. I've adopted, but I will make the video just to explain. Maybe it's a scientific uh, investigation. The point of view of the negative about the substance, because eventually, at some moment, I guess that people will recognize me that you are the negative. Uh, we are your substance. Uh, I don't know what they will think, but I I know myself to be so uh, for. Uh, it's been a long time, uh, four year, uh, for more than three years. Then I forgot consciously, and then I recovered, but. 
Then I. The negative is the philosophical meaning of what the religions call Lucifer, the devil, Satan. I've been thinking about this most of the day, precisely the relationship between God and uh, what people call Satan. So yeah, I will uh, I will just um, share some of my thoughts. Uh, I am becoming insane in ordinary language. There are many reasons. Uh, I have I will not say, but I've, I've re I wrote some of the things that I thought today. Uh, I experience psychological torment, not every day, but there are ups and downs, but when it can last a few days, but for, let us say, most of the days, there are days where, where I have been joyful over the past few weeks and months, but most of the days I experience psychological torment, let us call it that way. Uh, just a very simple example, uh, the previous video that I've posted uh, about uh, the, the table board, I tried to express an idea which is actually very simple but also comp complex, namely that in order to understand any social topic, it has to be recontextualized within the totality. And I tried to, to find the proper balance between accessibility and, and uh, 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 the minimum, the, the lowest level of intellectual rigor. And when I do this video, because I, 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 I try to, 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 to simplify, to, to make it more accessible, I, I sacrifice all, here I am, so all intellectual seriousness, <laughs> which, because, yeah, I, I sacrifice almost all intellectual seriousness for the sake of trying to communicate. And when I do this, I, I say to myself, but it's so simplified that eventually people will understand and, and, and it will have a lot of success. And when I see that the, the video has made four views, as far as, as I know, as, as of now, uh, almost, uh, almost one day, almost 24 hours later, broadly, uh, it's been, I think, uh, 18 hours, whatever, four views. I talk about the, the conceptual structure of a society. So here is part, partly self-deception and partly stupidity. I don't, I don't know, maybe it's self-deception, but in my mind, when I make these kind of videos where I talk about the totality, in a really accessible way, I think to myself, but this video will, will interest, of course, I, I'm well aware that it will, it will not be instant, but eventually it will interest uh, millions of people and then tens of millions because I talk about, about a society. And, and here it's really, I made videos on my channel in English, Cultural Hegelianism, I will now put the link. It was many months ago, I think, about being nothing and becoming. And I thought when I made it here that these were really good videos on an intellectual standpoint. They have made probably uh, between uh, I don't know, between ten and twenty views, and here is part of the, the insanity. <laughs> For me, talking about being nothing and becoming, which are the, the simplest, the most simple determination, which from which all other determinations of thought, namely the, the mind of God and eventually the world of nature and guys, emerge. 
and now I'm, I'm becoming more uh, sane thanks to uh, American common sense, I guess, empiricism, that I thought, I, I, I used to think that, but who wouldn't be interested in being or nothing? Because everything either is or is not, which is true. So in my view, if that's the Hegelian view, here I'm in a mood to laugh, but when I am not in a mood to laugh, like I have been most day, it makes me completely insane because that's what I said also, I become smarter almost every hour, every minute. I understand why people do not understand. But in my perspective, which, which is probably self-deception, if I talk about being a nothing, eventually everyone will be interested because everyone is interested in at least something and something is derived from being a nothing and becoming because it's being, nothing, becoming, Dasein, etc., etc., and then something and everyone is, is at least, every thinking human is at least inter interested in something. But then, I can anticipate. <laughs> Here I'm in a mood to laugh, but... <laughs> my my worldview. <laughs> I'm in a mood to laugh, but today, I, I have to confess, I have been really insane. Because when I make really... Here is my, my German self. I will not say in a bad sense, simply in a in a <laughs> in a demanding way. Uh, <laughs> I laugh, but I suffer because, as an empirical individual, because I try to, not to imitate Hegel, but to, to be up to the standards of Hegel. And Hegel, in his writings, he criticizes uh, everyone else for not being... <laughs> That's a nervous laughter, maybe. For not being serious enough, like... <laughs> God is making fun of me, I guess. <laughs> Will I be able to... <laughs> to communicate my thoughts? There's, there are these outbursts of... <laughs> Of fanaticism, one might say. <laughs> well, I will publish the video. This is my, my ethical standard. I no longer edit my videos, except if really I have to make a video where I have to introduce, but I will no longer. I, I almost. I, I have in some videos where I really was insane, but no, I will. I do not even rewatch my videos before posting it, except if really I have to implement, but I will. Be, that's my Protestant self. Uh, God somewhere in my mind, uh, the highest, uh, the three percent. It was thirty percent a few days ago. Now it's three percent. It doesn't mean that I have become more stupid. It does, the more smart I become, the more I understand God. The more I understand God, the more I say to myself, "Okay, the level of intelligence is so overwhelmingly uh, that it it reduces the proportion because." God is way too intelligent uh, for uh, for everyone else, for me, for for himself. Maybe not not for himself. Maybe I don't know. But uh, here I, I laugh. But uh, I ask myself. But what if God was too intelligent? To understand himself. I don't think it is because I, be, I still believe that there is a God which knows everything. And actually, I, 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 I probably do know that there is this God, but. Here I will, I will be positive. I have been negative uh, against myself, maybe against God uh, for most of the day, but here I will be positive. 
the level of intelligence of the entity that people call God uh, it's uh, here I will be a little bit negative I have been spontaneously here I, it's also spontaneous that I understand uh, the Christians uh, the, the Muslims and the Jews but and I have used uh, partly these books to try to communicate but the, the believers who say God uh, God wrote the Bible, whatever they think. God uh, wrote the Bible, or uh, the Muslim who think God wrote the Quran, or the Jews who God wrote the Torah. Uh, it's true uh, at some level, yes. But the first, the first mistake that they make is that God did not wrote the Bible, and then uh, oh, all the other books uh, they are uh, whatever uh, anti-Christian. Uh, there is only one God, so it's the same God who wrote these three books and uh, the, the Indian books and all the other uh, religious books and all the other books at some level uh, I guess but to, to restrict God to, to one book I will say here I will make a joke that I will regret but actually no because at this point that, that's the, the problem that I have with religious people <laughs> To, to, to restrict God to one book maybe at some moment I don't know maybe it's true but I, I am a Christian not just a Christian but my view of Christianity includes uh, all other religions uh, but the, the Bible of course it contains very important truths but it's a symbolic language Here's my, my Hegelian self who speaks. And here is where I, I, I do not understand uh, the real God, although I understand the real God more than uh, most people, that's kind of paradoxical, but to, to restrict God to, to one book uh, Probably uh, the, the real God is not probably is wiser than me because yeah, but t w the, the This is part of the insanity I have a conflict within me between my uh, My atheistic self not in the sense of an, being an atheist, but my, my inquiring self my scientific self, which partly exists, my Hegelian self in the sense of science, science and then my, my religious self, but they are the same, but... Yeah. This is also one of the reasons why I suffer, is because I have come to develop a view which has been modified over time but the, one of the pr predominant aspect of what I call God is intelligence it's not the only aspect but I have come to think about God as pure intellect which is kind of the Hegelian view but actually I've discovered that there's also the creative aspect so I, I have, it had taken me a long time to think of God as the creator. For me, God was an intellect, and it still is, but it's a creative intellect, or an intellectual creation, or both. But then there's the, the moral aspect, the ethical aspect, the... the Here it's kind of my, my my negative self in the positive sense, like kind of the, the, the what I call my scientific self now is that there's an aspect of me 
which is not always uh, made manifest even within me, but it's uh, the tendency of, of my, my, my mind, I guess, sometimes just to be in a scientific mood. Here's really my Hegelian self in the sense of a Hegel, a 19th century philosopher, a rigorous, etc. Sometimes I'm just a scientist. Uh, and the kind of joke that I make is that I am willing to to give my body uh, to science for the sake of scientific uh, <laughs> investigation. And here I would speak as a scientist. The experiment that I'm involved in, what kind of twisted experiment am I involved in, as Eminem says, just, I, I know that at some moment, the Americans, I mean, eventually all people, but mostly the Americans, I'm, I'm mostly interested in, in America. Here I will make a joke, but I, I've not been in a mood to laugh, but I'll make a joke. And then the Americans will say, ah, oh, we knew you would be interested in us. So then they will discover things about me. Ah, oh, I would prefer not to choose another country. <laughs> and maybe I will say the same thing. I would say I should have chosen another country. And if, if this has a happy ending, maybe we will say to one another, no, that was for, for laughter. We really, uh, you, you are the right country. Uh, and then maybe they will say you are the right uh, partner. <laughs> Whatever. No, America is a special but uh, there are other countries uh, as well it's complicated but yeah 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 uh, what was i saying uh yeah, yeah just from a strictly scientific standpoint i have been accumulating knowledge for years about america not consciously but not just america about the western world mostly but about about the whole world at large but predominantly the Western world, because it is where the life of, of, of spirit occurs. Uh, yeah. And the view that I have developed about most countries, not here, not just Western countries, but most countries, although I have more data for Western countries, when people eventually, when they stumble upon my videos where I show the the process of spirit and how I envision, or just by listening to me talk, uh, the way I envision things. Here I will quote Nietzsche. I read Nietzsche when really I, uh, I really have a difficult, difficult moment. I read Nietzsche and he always comes up with a... uplifting uh, quote. He says somewhere, uh, I translate, Nietzsche is not to be taken rigorously. Hegel, it has to be kind of rigorous. Nietzsche uh, <laughs> is here to, to appease uh, the suffering induced by Hegel. <laughs> but then Hegel teaches us that Nietzsche and Hegel, they are the same. And uh, Nietzsche says the same thing. Yeah. So they complement one another. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, but Nietzsche is, is kind of a, always positive <laughs> to, comp <laughs> to compensate Hegel, who is always negative. Uh, and together, they are always perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's insane, because for most of the day, I have been in an insanely negative mood, like really insane. There are reasons why I've become more positive. Partly Caroline. Caroline, you have uplifted my mood and I owe you uh, my positivity uh, for uh, for today and maybe uh, for uh, the times to come. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, Nietzsche says somewhere that when we sometimes we we when we love something, we idealize in, in the negative sense, uh, namely common sense. <laughs> we tend to forge uh, an image of the other, whether it's a woman or a, or, or a hero or a, or a country, which is actually so far removed from what the, 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 the loved object is that... The, 
the view that I have developed of, of America. In a way, it's more true than what any American thinks of America. But it's so far removed from the ordinary consciousness of the Americans. And that's partly why I have been negative and, and resentful and bitter and angry all day. It's because I fail to communicate. Even when I lower down the standards to really the, the minimum. And here it's my, my, I have been very critical today because I have a German self. Uh, and my German self thinks in terms of philosophical uh, rigor, one might say, and I compare what I do with the standards of the Germans and especially Hegel, and what I produce in terms of intellectual content, formal, uh, rigorous, etc., it's, I think, that an aspect of anything that it's complete garbage, but I do garbage because I try to to, to promote the, the ethical aspect, namely I have to make my videos intelligible to a broader audience, so I sacrifice all forms of, of, of seriousness on an intellectual level for the sake of trying to communicate, and it's partly a sacrifice for me because I really would like to speak like Hegel, namely the pure logical categories, but I lower down the, the standards. And when I do this, and I see that, that I, I cannot reach anyone or, or uh, four people. I, I hear it, that's when I become partly insane. I, I, there are tendencies in my mind, one of which is Okay, I have to, and that's, I have to, to work harder, better, faster, stronger, to make it even more rigorous, even more systematic. Uh, not my ordinary video, but what I call my system, more data, more rigor, more systematicity, more uh, uh, interconnectedness, more, uh, that's my, my totalitarian self. Like, the less people are interested in, in my most simple video, the more it, it makes me will to, 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 to work even harder on my serious videos, namely to, 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 to conceptualize more and to incorporate more data, more knowledge, etc. And here I can become really negative because uh, I partly do not understand, but then I understand is that even when my, my message my, my truth from a, from a philosophical standpoint, even when it is lowered down to the lowest level of, of, of accessibility, it's still way too complex for intelligent people. And when, when, when this happens, when I realize this, I become uh, really negative. And uh, yeah. that's why I've understood recently I will have to forgive all humans first because they are innocent. That's the good aspect. Uh, the good news that I bring, you are all innocent. Uh, Luther, you have no free will. Uh, all is determined. Uh, I am here to take the blame, etc., etc. That's the good news. Uh, but also I have to forgive them because uh, they don't understand me. Uh, even the smartest. I understood this uh, thanks to a Polonian germ. Uh, I have tried to, to communicate with the, really the, the most intelligent, most brilliant, smartest people on this planet. And a Polonian germ is uh, the most intelligent intellectual uh, male. And I acknowledge his brilliance. He still is brilliant, the most brilliant, but it's so far removed from my level of consciousness. And here I'm not talking as an arrogant German, but precisely this is kind of the suffering that I've understood today. Namely, if we talk uh, in terms of uh, God and 
the negative, whatever you want to call it, Lucifer or Satan or whatever, when I speak as, as, as the negative, namely when I say, oh, I'm just an ordinary human like you, uh, uh, I have to confess that uh, I am attracted by uh, attractive women and uh, I just would like to be a normal person uh, with a job. Uh, uh, I would like to, to, uh, to, to, to have friends, uh, which is true on an empirical level, but this is my negative self. This is the insanity. This is a betrayal of God because this is separation from God. So I have understood today that actually pretty much everyone loves what they call the devil because it's simply ordinary existence. But I've also understood that most people, they, they will probably dislike, if not really hate God, because when I speak not uh, as I think God should speak, namely with my logical categories, I have experienced this, the reaction that I get is that people, they are negative against me, although I, I am serious and rigorous and and I speak about about God in, 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 in the way I understand this from a serious point of view, I receive only negative criticism. I am called arrogant. Uh, people, they are kind of scared. And here I think about uh, Pulp Fiction at the end. Uh, if you, if you, my, my answers uh, scare you, stop asking scary questions. Uh, so when I speak about God, people are kind of frightened uh, because uh, I, I am accused of being arrogant, totalitarian, um, uh, boring. Well, and I, I understand because here is really my... my uh, it's not my arrogant self, it's my, my God self, I might say. Uh, as, as, as a mind, God is totalitarian. And here, I really, the, the encounter with empirical people, here I will talk a little bit. Science, UPS, when scientific knowledge is made available, it is valid because it is universal, it is valid for every singular person. And here, I understand people, why they might have a, why they will have a problem with God, not with the negative, that's why it's partly inverted, is because uh, in a way I want to collect knowledge, but co by collecting universal knowledge, it, it, it is applied to every singular. So I will take an example. I have already said this, but uh, uh, people, they don't like the idea that uh, all their, their phone calls, their banking transaction, transaction their internet connection, uh, their, their visit on website, uh, all their, their dirty little secrets are being uh, uh, under surveillance or are being uh, the, the big data, big brother, uh, uh, whatever. They find this as, as, as uh, an insult or an, an offense or an attack against their, 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 their private, their privacy. And I agree, but from the point of view of God, uh, in a way, it's God who wants to collect the data. So uh, to protect individual privacy, it's, it's partly good from the point of view of liberty, but from the point of view of God, as a totalitarian mind, this is uh, an attempt to... to to, to negate God in a way. That's the ambiguity of the positive and the negative. And the way I understand this, it's Guardiola versus Mourinho. Uh, Mourinho, he is evil, but people kind of like him. His players and his fans, they like him. Guardiola, he's good, but his players hate him. Partly, I simplified. No, I, I simplify really, it's a, really a, yeah. But because Guardiola, in full, he's a totalitarian manager. He wants to control everything. And he is the good guy, and Mourinho is the bad guy. Uh, but Mourinho, uh, uh, he's kind of negative. But uh, yeah, well, Guardiola really, he, he, everyone loves him. But he's kind of, he can be scary because he's really a totalitarian. He, he's kind of a, a, f a fanatic in a sense. He, he's good, but he's a fanatic, and it can be partly the same with God. That's one of the, the conflicts. Uh, here I express myself 
calmly, but uh, uh, yeah. And that's why there will be problems between between my, my, my God self and ordinary people who are not awakened because I, I, I know because I've already experienced this, they, mean they, they will say, but uh, you are, uh, they will not even maybe speak, but they will reject my, my divine self because they will experience this as a, as a violation of their privacy, a violation of their individuality, which it is, but yeah, that's why. I, I will uh, I will be misunderstood and I have to forgive humans. I've understood this. This is my problem. I would have to. Because I understood this. Uh, when people try to refute me, when I speak seriously with my logical categories, when they try to refute me, they confirm what I say. It's simply that I express this in rather rigorous language and they, they express the same thing while thinking they are con that they are con contradicting me. They just use ordinary language. And the only th when it happens, I, I become kind of negative. But if I find the intelligence and the strength, I say, OK, I understand you. That's what I've just said. You are just confirming what I said. OK, I understand. I understand. Okay, that's what I try to do. That's why I study logic to try to. Maybe that's my good Christian self. I have to take the negative, which is just my own negativity, but due here to a misunderstanding. And that's why I might become very arrogant because uh, I have experienced myself as being a complete idiot on an intellectual level for many years. But now that I, that I keep getting smarter and smarter, when I know myself to be smart, I will start uh, trash talking people, uh, intelligent people, or those who claim that they are intelligent, and uh, they will not like this. But uh, yeah, because I will I will become <clears throat> uh, more and more maybe arrogant. I understand partly why, but also the more arrogant I am, it's because I'm becoming more confident in my abilities in a way. So arrogance is an excess, but it moves further forward as the level of confidence uh, grows uh, forward. And now I will talk about uh, the psychological torment because I am working on a system to try to eventually to conquer the world intellectually. And I have just understood today that here, that's why I'm kind of confident. The people who think are in charge, uh, they don't uh, really know what they are doing. They know they might know what they are doing on a political level, but on a, on a cosmic level, they have no clue. And that's why the good aspect uh, is that I'm not really afraid of them. Because their, their level of consciousness is so far removed from my level of consciousness, even when I am at a low level, that uh, they, 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 uh, the, the things that I have been thinking about over the past few years, it's so far removed from, from the, the ordinary consciousness of people. That's why sometimes I speak uh, like uh, the Joker spontaneously or because uh, there is here there's really a cosmic misunderstanding really
and the misunderstanding I know comes from the fact that four years ago in August 2018 I knew myself to be God but what is God uh, what is being uh, wh what is I these are philosophical questions so I experienced myself as being God and I also experienced myself I want to call on an empirical level as being pathetic stupid weak uh, immature uh, embarrassing in a way so I, I, I uh, how should I explain this I have kept experiencing myself as being an idiot because my standards uh, <laughs> this is the truth. these are the standards of Hegel in a sense that I have lived two and a half years in the really two and a half years daily several hours a day in the mind of Hegel or the writings of Hegel and here I've already said this but I know I'm in a process of understanding that in the coming days or week uh, people eventually will hear about me and I will act very weirdly and the reason why I'm making this video is because to try to express what I, can, what I still can express myself peacefully and calmly to anticipate the kind of reaction that I might have because I understand uh, the writings of Hegel here I will speak uh, I will slightly caricature but just for the sake of uh, uh, Plato, Aristotle, uh, it's not really rigorous. Uh, Newton, it's not really serious from the perspective of Hegel. Uh, Kant, not very rigorous. Uh, Schelling and Fichte, not rigorous, not very serious. So, intellectual geniuses, really, the intellectual geniuses, from the perspective of the mind of Hegel, it's almost embarrassing. And this is the kind of, of mindset in which I have lived for two and a half years, several hours a day, w without almost talking to anyone. So I have developed my worldview with no uh, empirical uh, confirmation in a way we, we, no, not confirmation but without almost any empirical encounter and here it explains one of the problems that I have with women and with uh, my empirical family is that the very few people with whom I have talked over the past few years were members of my empirical family and I have talked and talked and talked about good ideas what I thought and I understand I, I, I should not blame uh, women I know this thanks to uh, my metaphysical etc but just to explain my psyche I have experienced frustration because I have not been able to talk or when I do I understand okay not just them but women in general <laughs> this is one of my contradictions, they listen to me when they do out of politeness. This is one of my psychology, one of the, the fundamental psychological problems that I have and that I still have to this day, which kind of make me act a little bit insane sometimes. I haven't been able to talk to anyone for since 2009, one might say. I have talked to people, but here is one of my, my fundamental problems. Since 2009, I haven't been able to, to, to talk to talk with a person that I really enjoyed being with, or it, I, I would be lying if I said so, but basically really to, to be with someone and to be able to, to talk. And when I did over the past, since 2009, I have had interesting conversation, but very few quantitatively with very few people and 
always with the, the feeling that okay I'm my problem one of my problems is that I, I have never been able to talk to anyone about interesting topics what I call interesting topics <sighs> physics chemistry biology anthropology race realism IQ uh, politics economics sociology history uh, art religion and philosophy actually interesting topics because no one had even a remote understanding of how I see things that's why I am partly uh, focused on trying to talk with uh, the Hyperboreans because before uh, disappearing or going uh, whatever I, I, I just would like to have a peaceful discussion this is one of my fundamental problems whatever whoever I am I will let people judge me eventually I have no choice but to be judged but I have never been able to have a conversation about interesting topics even when I had enjoyable conversation in my teenage years with my sweetheart it was not really interesting I mean it was wonderful from the perspective of a teenager but I was completely dumb and in terms of intellectual content I was I was not uh, the here's partly my scientific self who speaks I was completely dumb I was uh, ignorant etc so this was not a high level in terms of science but of course it was wonderful in terms of uh, the joy of being able to be with someone uh, I, I loved and I the illusion loved me back and we would we were happy to talk about uh, any topic just the joy of being together that's called love and of course I am nostalgic of this is my, my, my problem basically the, maybe the problem of God to be able to, to be with an other in a love relationship for just for being able to share the joy of, of, of just being together and talking together. And here I'm, I'm express myself calmly. But the impossibility that I've... Or the, 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 the fact that I haven't been able to, to just peacefully... peacefully talk about interesting topics it requires to talk with, with, with a male, actually. Uh, to talk about science, uh, politics, uh, economics. There has to be a masculine other with whom I can speak peacefully. That's called a friend. I haven't had any friend uh, in this sense for... Uh, I've never had any interesting conversation or very, very few... With, with, with a friend in this sense someone this is part of a, it seems completely it, maybe it's childish uh, stupid but actually it's very important because it explains my insanity race realism I explain myself to my future viewers I live in a country empirically where it is not uh, almost not possible just to talk about race realism I don't want to be a racist fanatic. I can be uh, when I become a little bit uh, astray. But just to be able to, to acknowledge that there are differences between the various ethnic groups. This is why, one of the reasons why I, I, am, I, I am attracted so much by Anglo, um, Anglo, the Anglo-Saxon world, and especially America, because um, the Americans, I know what they think. Our country, uh, it's a nightmare. Uh, we talk about race all the time. I understand, I understand. For me, America is a dream. <laughs> For now, maybe. <laughs> I understand. This is one of the problems that I have, is that I am, in a way, I am way too smart because I understand way too fast. But America, here, just from the perspective of race, is kind of a dream because it's a country where it's possible to say, there are differences between the various groups. Just this basic scientific, not on a moral standpoint, but just to explain, okay, 
there are differences in physical features, uh, differences in behavior, intellect. Not here. It's not really not a, a, in terms of good or bad, uh, superior, inferior. No, just to acknowledge from a strictly rational standpoint, and the inability to talk in a common sense way with anyone. This drives me insane. Because to to pretend that. Uh, all humans are equal and that there are no genetic differences, it, it makes the modern world and, and the entire historical process and, and human beings, it, it makes human beings completely unintelligible. Those who reject race realism in the name of morality, to reject racism in the realm of morality is good. Here is my, my sane Christian self, namely racism is a sin, but race realism uh, it's just common sense, in a way. But then realism includes negation. There's the Anzish man, which is uh, without race, whatever. The spirit of Jesus, maybe. I don't know. But in an ordinary perspective, race realism is in the middle with Ron Paul and Charles Murray and Thomas Sowell and uh, Daisy Luther and uh, Jeff Deist and the ordinary Americans. And, and uh, racism is on the right, and anti-racism maybe on the left, but in the middle, which is supposed quantitatively to include the vast majority of the population, race realism should be common sense, namely to acknowledge, okay, uh, blacks, whites, Asians, these are first ordinary language, this is uh, European Caucasoid, Northeast Asian, or Mongoloid, uh, uh, Sub-Saharan African, or uh, Negroid, this is not derogatory, this is simply the scientific jargon, it should be common sense. Like in, 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 in biology, you, um, animals are, are classified in, in botany, uh, in, in, in economics, the, the various products, the very br various branches of the economy, they are classified. And human beings, they are not. And here it's partly my scientific self, which can be considered arrogant, but to, to, to think that humans are, are some sort of completely uh, separated from the rest of of, of, of the world is kind of delusional. They are through their intellect, but to leave aside uh, the sociobiological characteristic, it's a, a delusion first. And um, I, I genuinely suffer from having been unable to have any discussion with anyone about, about these basic topics. This drives me insane. Now I'm in a positive mood, and I. But yeah, this partly explains my my past or future insanity. I will try to regulate this, but to be unable to talk, while, because dialectics, I understand dialectics partly means dialogue. So, what is the point of having a dialectical process if there is no dialogue? What is the point if I am here? I have been here in my room for uh, 13 years, one might say, with a few exceptions, uh, yeah, talking alone almost. And here I have to be honest to God and to humans out of uh, honesty. I have experienced moments where I have been genuinely uh, kind of frustrated and even angry against humans because, because most humans, not all of them, but most humans, they can enjoy Having conversations, not about IQ, race, uh, politics, uh, philosophy, no, just conversation without experiencing themselves as being carriers of the weight of the whole world. Because I have had over the past few months, I explained here my frustration. People will be able to understand and I will try to it, the, just say, this is how I function and now I will keep making the same mistakes. No, I explain in order to try to prevent from making the same mistakes. Again, I, that's called improvement and wisdom and intelligence in the, in the sense of uh, gr growing in wisdom. But I know that I could go out and have a conversation with people. And sometimes I do because otherwise I really become completely insane. I just have to talk just five minutes. For me, it's, a, it's bliss. It's joy. Just five minutes with a person to talk about anything, I don't know, but to talk just about ordinary topics, 
I find my, I have found my joy over the past few months by just being able to talk with people. And when they were English or German, <laughs> but I feel like I'm not, uh, there, there are moments when I say, okay, if I take uh, uh, 20 minutes to go out and to talk to someone, probably at some place in the world there will be a flood or a, a tornado or a, an earthquake or a, uh, a terrorist attack uh, god knows where in, in Africa or in Asia and people will die no I, I, then I will come back I will make the, the, the but is it because I went out for 20 minutes to have a conversation that at the other part of the world someone some people die and then I said to myself I don't care about these people but I care about my moral standards and the idea that I'm responsible for people dying because I just took a break for 20 minutes to talk with someone, this drives me insane. That's why I would like, I want, I want peace, uh, but will, I understand, I probably I will no longer be there when there is peace, I will be, uh, I don't know. So this is what drives me insane is that I don't know if I will ever be able to peacefully talk with another about topics that I'm interested in. And uh, that's what makes me insane. And when I become really negative, this explains why I retreat into the, the, the only genuinely happy moment of my existence, namely my, my teenage romance for a few months where I could joyfully, happily, innocently, peacefully be with someone. This is maybe the, the pathetic aspect, I don't know, the, but just to, to enjoy being with another. I have enjoyed many moments of my life over the past few years and sometimes partly while being with others, but uh, most of the moments that I've enjoyed the most, namely my intellectual life, I have been all alone in my room or in front of my computer by imagining talking to the people that today I would, I would say I love them, but I have never been able to, to talk to them. I, I know pretty much everything about them, not uh, the details, but uh, I know their intellectual life. That's why I'm so attracted by them and that's why just the fact that they might acknowledge my existence, I am, uh, I would say, full of bliss. But the problem here, it's one of my other problems, the moral problem is that I've been able to reach uh, two people, Apollonian, German, Carolyn, and I have tried to be honest with them. Here it's my, my, my moral conflict. I try to be honest without... I, I want to do good in a way, knowing that I am evil, but I, I want to do good by speaking the truth and it backfires because I become repulsive when I speak the truth. That's why I am forced morally in a way. I mean, maybe I'm not, maybe that's my evil, I don't know, but I experience myself as having to lie to, to, to everyone else, but mostly to the empirical people. That's why I have some sort of a double identity because I speak on the internet while knowing that it, got, it becomes public and that eventually everyone will be able to hear this. So I know that I'm consciously lying, but in order, if, if I went out and spoke the truth, I would end up in a mental asylum. Whereas on the internet with uh, four people watching my videos or maybe uh, five or 10 in my best videos on this channel, 10 views. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, part of the insanity, but I'm not afraid of going into a mental asylum because I've already been there and there are worse places uh, to visit. But I would like to be able to communicate publicly in English at least long enough to be able to, to, to have my system, the formal aspect set and in place so that People, at least, they will... This is the kind of insanity that I have to produce, namely to, 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 to... Here, maybe that, I don't know, but may, maybe I have to produce just a totalitarian 
system which encompasses everything just so that people might acknowledge that I exist. That may be the pathetic aspect. I don't know. Because when I really suffer, like I did most of the day, morally and intellectually, I just want to say, but hey, I exist. And then people, because the view that people have of whatever they call God, it's a pure abstraction. It's a, maybe it is what they call the one or whatever. It's, there is a fundamental misunderstanding. Uh, yeah. And I, I am smart enough to understand that at some moment in the coming days or weeks, I don't know, suddenly, eventually, my, my videos will become successful and then everyone or most people, they will come at me at the same time and all the pressure of the world. And then I try, I will try my best to, to, to solve all the contradictions coming at me at the same time. But here is my really my, my negative self uh, the devil as they call this I will suffer I know that I deserve to suffer but here that's when I turn towards God and I uh, how how wh whatever I am uh, the, the, the the, uh, the, the negative of God without the, 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 the moment of, of negative morally, but just being separated from God, being confronted by, by the totality of, of creation or the totality of, of all others, or I don't know, but how can I not have a, a mental, uh, I don't know, mental breakdown? I will try not to, but I anticipate that, that maybe maybe not because precisely the positive and the negative but at some moment a lot of people I guess will that's uh, I don't know what to say but I can anticipate that at some moment people will realize that uh, uh, whatever the Lucifer or whatever they want to call this uh, the prince of this world as they say in the Bible, or, or God, I don't know what they will say, but that, that the negative, yeah, the negative of the substance talks to them. And I can anticipate that people, some people will, will want to talk with me, not the people that I would like to talk to. That's, uh, that's my negative self, basically, because they are, <laughs> that's really my negative self in the sense that I am trying to communicate with a select minority of people that I call my spiritual family and I just would like to peacefully talk with them, be with them, I don't know if it's possible, but to talk with them peacefully at least. And I can't reach them and if I do, I try to be honest as, as much as, as I can and then it backfires and I receive negative reactions which is kind of what I want because I want to be negated so I kind of enjoy being negated but uh, not by the I mean in a way I do but I would like to be understood by the people that maybe I love the most but yeah but then I guess that ordinary people will want to to talk with me or to, to I don't know. I, I, here I, I really don't know. I, I really don't know because here it's really part of my insanity and my negative self because when I read the, the, the news, people, they are interested in the, in the life of, here I would be kind of negative, but insignificant people like uh, uh, t -t TV, uh, TV shows, uh, even uh, here I will be kind of negative, but sportsmen, I mean, the idea that people might be interested in the private life or the, 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 the stories of sportsmen, for me, it's completely removed from my reality. So, but I guess that eventually, if it happens, 
Uh, I came prepared. I have the songs by Eminem. I would use uh, uh, the songs that Eminem uh, uses to 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 trash talk. Uh, the, the whatever. That's why I I I really. Uh, I, I don't know the, the, here that's what the, the, the video will be about the relationship between the, the negative and the substance what is the substance not in the view of the negative but in the view of itself and what is the negative in the view of the substance I don't know that's my scientific uh, self we will see but uh, my hope that, that's basically the, the hope that I have had for for many years for since 2019 that basically this is maybe my, my entire reason for talking uh, it's that there will be at least a few people at some moment who will say okay we understand that you are the negative and uh, who will find themselves in a position to say that's weird but who will kind of understand I think uh, people like Zizek maybe someday I, I, I will know what Zizek thinks of the negative not in a psychoanalytical sense <laughs> Slavoj No, but seriously, this this is really. I basically I just have tried to to here I can only imagine, but at least some Hegelians, I mean Hegelians formal Hegelians they, 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 they will at some moment hear about me and they will realize that my empirical self is what Hegel calls the negative And here, my really my negative sense in a sense of, of morality, whatever or whoever I am, I speak here as an empirical individual. I just would like to be left alone peacefully. So in a sense, I'm just just like Zizek, to to read good books or to be able eventually to peacefully talk with the few people that I would like to be able to talk to. But the whatever I am, I can't because I have. I'm not good, but I have this some sort of moral compulsion that I have to solve all the problems of the world. Not because I care about all the problems. I care when I do uh, care. I care about the problems of white people. But then I have to solve all the problems of the world just because I would like to be able to be to be left alone peacefully and read good books without feeling guilty for all the problems, the, the complaint, and I am at some level, but billions of people who all complain about all sorts of psychological, social, economic, uh, political, geopolitical, uh, religious problems of all sorts, In this sense, I don't know what I am. And this is the, the, the comical aspect, because hopefully, hopefully there will be people here. I, I would laugh. Today I was not in a mood to laugh, but people who will be able to to laugh at me. But here I will be more serious because I know myself to be negative. So I try to negate myself. That's why in most of my videos I laugh at myself. I confess that it's true that I experience myself partially as being dumb, 
uh, kind of pathetic, uh, grotesque, etc. I, I willingly confess all my my embarrassing aspects, and I I, I know that eventually at, at some in some way I am responsible for all the negativity in the world, all the problems. Uh, yeah, so. I kind of confess this, but because I want to be negated and to negate the negative in a way, but I keep doing this. Uh, I laugh about myself, uh, I, uh, and I kind of partly find this funny. But there is there is nonetheless sometimes an aspect in me which says, "Okay, uh, that maybe that's the serious aspect." Namely, uh, when I kind of identify partly with God. Okay, it's funny to be laughed at, and I deserve to. But there are some some moments when I say, "Okay, uh, I I accept being laughed at, mocked, uh, made fun of, etc." But there I still there I still have a, some, a sense of seriousness, uh, and there are things that uh, yeah. So yeah. So that that might explain some of my behavior, maybe. Uh, yeah. Because actually, I don't really know what I am or who I am or uh, what I am doing here. I'm starting to understand more and more, but. Uh, because I experience myself Partly as being the son of God, that's when I, I talk to God because uh, I have no one else to talk to. <laughs> but also, I understand, I have understood over the past few months that actually it's a process, uh, of course, philosophical, etc., but also kind of psychological. And I have to to evolve and to mature and to become uh, kind of the father archetype with no role model. I expressed this uh, many months ago on the sixteenth of May four uh, years after my conversion to Christianity. And, uh, yeah. So, here it will explain the insanity. Uh, I understood a few uh, weeks ago that there is only one woman, metaphysically, this explains a lot of my insanity. This knowledge that I have vaguely at some moments when I focus that there's only one woman, there's only one principle. This explains a lot of my insanity. And here I can only, when people eventually, I guess, I don't know, maybe no, because I, I don't know, maybe. Uh, things will be dissolved into, I don't know, but if people understand this, that there's only one woman or one principle, that's why maybe my videos uh, are not successful, because the knowledge that I share is way too, uh, way too complex and way too, uh, the, yeah, but, uh, Which explains why here it, it's really insanity. But uh, I there's only one woman that I love, which is of course Stella. But uh, there are uh, countless Stellas, and then probably there's also one woman that I that I dislike. It's Stella, also I guess. But I love her more. I have such a, a high opinion of her, because precisely that's what I said earlier, uh, when I am in love, I maybe I have a... <laughs> but... Yeah. 
here really I say what I think is that it's very simple but also it's so complex that intellectually I, I reach my limit because it's way too uh, and when I have these moments I say to myself but I am not God at all because God is way too smart and in this sense I turn towards God and I say but what uh, what is God what is this this how can Here it's scary, not in a scary sense, but kind of in, a, in an awe-inspiring, in, in a not scary, uh, yeah, but it, it kind of, it's kind of frightening, but the, 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 what is God? I know the formal definition, but how can... And when I have this thought, I said to myself, but, but what am I and why you... Here I really, th when, I, when I think like this, like God as being a, the, the whole of reality in a way, I said to myself, but wh what am I doing here? Why is... I don't know, but these are the kind of moments that I experience. Uh, Why am I here? Why? Why did you choose me? Uh, because here I, I feel really like there is a, a super intelligent entity, which actually is really not me, because uh, here I'm completely limited. But what am I as an empirical individual? Why does there have does there have to be a, a negative, uh, a negative in order for the relationship? Why does it turn into the the religious mythology, why are there so many... Uh... And when I'm in this mood, uh, I would like to share God with others. And here, I because it's amazing and then I am frustrated because the people, they work stupid jobs, uh, they waste their, their life paying taxes, etc. Et and, and here I'm really frustrated, that's why I become a libertarian, not because I care about economics, <laughs> but because I just would like to reduce the working hours for the sake of, of enabling people uh, to, to just to appreciate uh, creation. I'm not always in this mood, but when I am, I am genuinely frustrated against against the system, which I guess is an aspect of me, but... And here, I, I, I mean, I'm in a, in a good mood, but I become insane because uh, I would like to be this... Uh, <laughs> this revolutionary who brings uh, whatever the world, uh, whatever, world communism without uh, Stalin and the Gulag. So that's why it's libertarian communism. Uh, but not uh, not because I'm a good guy, simply because I would like people to be able to appreciate the cosmos and the... the, the and here, that's why I'm, I'm genuinely frustrated. <laughs> and here only... God, maybe, uh, I don't know, but... I am frustrated against the stupidity of the people. <laughs> I can't help but be, be negative. Why are you so stupid, uh, dear uh, Americans, but also dear... Uh, or, or not so dear, I don't know, but uh, dear humans. <laughs> I've read a quote by Nietzsche today. Uh, uh, someone uh, who, uh, whatever, he said that the disdain for humans and love for humans, uh, they are kind of the same at some level. <laughs> the best way to love humans maybe is to, to have disdain for them. <laughs> I'm kidding. You know I love you. No, we don't. Uh, look at the state of the world. Uh, we don't think that you love us. Uh, maybe a little bit more love. Uh. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to bring with my system. 
But here's my arrogant self. I can only love uh, eventually uh, most people if, if you let me first love the people that I really love or would like to. Uh, or the particular. I will talk about Lady Gaga because she has been here I talk for myself because by the time that people understand what I'm saying uh, either I will be no longer there or uh, yeah I, I will say what I think about uh, being uh, absent if I were a god I would be an atheist uh, no 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 I no if I were a god I I would want people, humans, to be atheists, namely, I, I would be communist, but not uh, the Maoist, the Stalinist type, I would be a communist in the sense that I would want people to be happy without ever mentioning me or my name, they, I wouldn't want them to know that I exist, I, I would be invisible, transparent, people would not talk about religion, they wouldn't talk about God, they would just be happy. If I were God, I, I would be this atheistic God is it possible I don't know but uh, yes yeah, so I don't know where I will be or if I will be conscious somehow but Lady Gaga. She has been very important in my intellectual development. With the paparazzi song, uh, I started to realize that maybe I was important by listening to this song, which completely changed my view back then. Then there was a moment, uh, I think in June or I don't know, but when I recognized her as being a human, maybe the first human being that I ever encountered, I mean, I never encountered her, but because I understood that by listening to one of her songs, that she was kind of a... She was like me. <laughs> That's paradoxical. She was here on this planet, and she, she suffered, and she didn't know really what she was doing here. And she just expressed her... Uh, parts of her suffering through artistic... Uh, expression. And then, last week, I think, uh, I listened to her. So, first, uh, the paparazzi moment, then the, the, the first human, although I, I already said and believe that she was kind of the, f the female aspect of God made present in the realm of pop culture. Uh, and, uh, yeah, then uh, I recognized her as a human being. Then I listened to her talk uh, last week or uh, also uh, a few days ago, I don't know, and I was amazed by, by her intelligence. And uh, today, precisely, maybe I will conclude the video on this. This is my uh, metaphysical insanity. At at some moment. Uh, I, I, I am the father of reality, in a way. So, in a way, this is really the insanity. All humans, somehow, I do not think like this because uh, they, they are kind of, at some level of consciousness, they are kind of my, my children. 
And maybe Lady Gaga is the first that I recognized as such today. I mean, that's the insanity. She's on an empirical level, she's older than me. But on an idealist perspective, she exists for the mediation of my consciousness. And I think of myself empirically still as, as, a, as a teenager in a way, or as, as a man, uh, an adult. But so I think with the categories of the masculine psychology of a, a man in his uh, late 20s, early 30s, uh, namely I'm, <laughs> here I will laugh, but I'm still searching for a wife. And of course I think about Stella, uh, but then I think also about my teenage romance and whatever, but I still, yeah, that's part of the insanity. But then I sometimes think of myself as being the father of, of reality in a way. And I kind of recognized today, not, uh, it's just, I thought, okay, but by listening to Lady Gaga, uh, Stephanie uh, talk, and I said to myself, but if, uh, if she was my daughter, not on an empirical level, but on a... I, I would be proud of her, uh, whatever uh, she might have uh, said, or... <laughs> That's the kind of the ambiguity, because of course some of her songs, uh, it's a little bit... Uh, one might say, yeah, but overall, I don't even know her personal story. I've just listened to uh, 15 of her songs. I mean, many times, but uh, I know uh, 15 or maybe 20 of her songs. I don't know. And I've just listened to her talk in an interview uh, three times. And uh, I never, of course, experienced myself as being a parent of, or any of anyone, because I'm I mean I'm in the search of a father, so I I need a father or a lack of father. So how could I be the father of others uh, if I have no role model, whatever? But this is part of the insanity, because it's actually on a metaphysical level, it's kind of logical. Because if all is one, yeah, but on an empirical level, that's the confusion between the metaphysical, the empirical, which explains my past present and maybe a future madness, simply, yeah, that's where Evola, uh, Hegel, uh, yeah, and pop culture. But if I, if I had to think about Lady Gaga as some sort of my, my, my daughter, not empirically, I'm not crazy to this point, but as a projection and whatever, I thought, uh, well, obviously, I, I would be proud of her. And not, paradoxically, not of her songs, which, if I'm honest, are great. And she's a genius in terms of... Her. She's a genius. And genius, uh, that's the same qualification for Eminem. It's, uh, of course, it's kind of good because, yeah, but there are all the aspects in a sense that uh, some, the genius is kind of uh, beyond, I would say beyond good and evil, but beyond good and bad. So some form of genius, it's just genius. It's, uh, yeah, that's why it's kind of ambiguous. I mean, it's not ambiguous, but... Uh, There are no good geniuses and bad geniuses. There are just geniuses. And Eminem, there are kind of negative and dark aspects within Eminem, but he's a genius. It, it, it cannot be denied. In, in pop culture, it's, it's pure genius. And the same goes for Lady Gaga. Of course, masculine genius is different and 
in a way more more brilliant in a way than feminine genius in terms of artistic expression so Eminem uh, if I had to say uh, use a quantitative determinant it's higher than Lady Gaga because uh, the masculine genius is uh, yeah but Lady Gaga she's, she's an artistic uh, genius there is no other word but I'm not here's kind of my uh, I will say what I think, but I, I would hate if Hegel did the same to me. That's why I have a problem with Hegel. But I am more proud of, of, of the, 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 the tens of minutes, the, the few dozens of minutes that I've listened to her talk as, as a person, the way she talks and the way she expresses herself and her emotions. It's okay because she's a woman. <laughs> I've listened for hours and hours and hours and hours of her songs over the past few months, but just listen to her talk for a few dozens of minutes in a few interviews, and in a way she's more uh, more brilliant. I will not let Hagel say the same thing about me. I refuse. <laughs> I can anticipate. She's more brilliant uh, when she just talks as a human being than when she does her creative genius and here's the sad uh, sad for me but uh, whatever happens to whatever I will uh, I will keep uh, Lady Gaga and, and Stephanie uh, in my mind as a great moments one might say like uh, the hyperboreans the european gods and goddesses And um, I will not let myself be uh, fooled by my emotions because I have to introduce a little bit of negativity. <laughs> I'm in a mood to laugh, but I've watched uh, some of the. the <laughs> you know, it will be partly evil, but uh, yeah. Uh, some of the, 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 the movie clips. Uh, if she was my daughter, uh, I would not let her date uh, anyone. I would be very uh, regarding. Uh, I would very, um, uh, yeah. I would. I would be careful uh, who she dates. <laughs> but thank God I'm not a father because I would be. Uh, yeah, I will. I will. Uh, I will use a little bit of a dialectical trick. I would be a, an Italian American father, like um, Tony Soprano. <laughs> I would make sure that my uh, my daughter doesn't date uh... <laughs> if there are Americans with enough intelligence and culture to understand some of the things that I say about America maybe some Americans eventually will love me I don't know uh, yeah no but uh, no that what I experienced today is just uh, As a, as a male, I can be critical of many aspects of a, as, as a German politician, one might say, I can be very critical of some aspects of, of the modern American society, but then if I adopt the perspective of a father archetype, which is partly connected with the German politician, for better and for worse, I guess. If if Lady Gaga was some sort of a here it's insanity, but not really. But my my daughter, not on an empirical level, but simply as existing in my mind. And eventually, this is the kind of truth that will have to become uh, public in the coming. Uh, 
let's say the coming weeks because yeah pride is a scene uh, from a Christian perspective but I, I would I would feel a uh, I would love her. I kind of do, but then uh, the, uh, maybe maybe a father loves his daughter differently than his son because he has less expectations. I'm not downgrading uh, the achievements of uh, Stephanie Germanotta, but if if I imagine myself as being the father of, of children. I would of course uh, love my daughters more than uh, my sons, probably. I mean, maybe not, uh, depending, but uh, I understand myself. I would be more demanding with my sons. Thank God I'm not the father of anyone. I will conclude by saying that one of the, the reasons of my insanity, which is negativity or whatever, I will try to contain and to transcend through uh, acceptance or whatever, but there are really moments when I become insane. Not publicly because, uh, yeah, but eventually at some moment I will, I guess, or I will try to, to, to transcend and the smarter I become, the wiser, so I have to accept uh, the fact that humans will not understand me. <laughs> but um, The fact that I have been unable to talk uh, with with anyone about what I call interesting topics, which in my perspective these are topics that I have discovered since 2016, namely I am able now to hold a conversation about interesting topics, uh, the sciences, uh, anthropology, uh, so like psychology, objective ergeist and absolute ergeist. So I I have become, I guess, uh, and here it's also part of the insanity. I mean, up until a few months ago, I never expected that I would have anything interesting to say because here empiricism deceives me maybe. Empirically, I had never Never, never, anyone ever told me that I was interesting, except out of politeness. But and now I can anticipate that actually I still think of myself. I mean, no, no, because now I know that no one cares of what I say. But it's not because what I say is not interesting. Because eventually I can anticipate that at some moment people, if if I am still present physically uh, somehow, they they might be interesting in what I have to say. Here I don't know because I thought that in partly maybe I would say that I would die before being able to actually talk to anyone. This is part of the, my frustration. That's why I re record these kind of videos, or some sort maybe of a legacy. Uh, this is what uh, the negative uh, thought before. Uh, I don't know, it will take a few days, a few weeks, I don't know, before uh, being recognized by the substance. Let us talk like uh, Hegel, I guess. And from a scientific standpoint, my videos, uh, if, if 
people watch them eventually. This is what the negative has thought about the substance. And my insanity comes from the, the traumatic uh, moments that I've experienced. I have chosen to be honest in many of my videos, to sacrifice uh, all forms of uh, rigor and systematicity. And the question that I, ask, that I ask myself is, am I trapped by all the things that I've said? And this is also part of my insanity. The kind of question that I ask myself daily or constantly is, is if, if, I, if, I may, if I fail to, to, to express myself clearly, if I make a, 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 a linguistic error, will it come back to, to haunt me? If I forget to say something, if I, if I speak too long or if I do not say something, will, I be a, will there be a catastrophe somewhere? Will I be responsible? Uh, no, the, the, whenever there is a behind me, uh, eventually I don't really care because I will have to reveal uh, I guess, uh, no, I, uh, my, my environment. So in a sense, I, I don't want to hide, but is, is, is there some signs? Uh, if, if I show parts of whatever, will it bring about misunderstanding? Uh, uh, I, I grant myself the right sometimes to, to, to read a book for, for 30 minutes, of course, Hegel or sometimes other books, and I feel like this, like some sort of a, uh, I, like I'm, I'm committing a sin against uh, the whole of mankind because for 30 minutes I've read a book instead of uh, trying to work to produce a video. Although I use my readings to produce better videos, etc. And that's why here, that's part of my insanity. That's why uh, I thought about uh, the CIA, uh, all the governments of the world, in this sense. Uh, I will end on a positive note. They are really clowns. I mean, they can be scary for others, but I'm no, I'm no longer scared of them because what they call uh, oh intimidation, etc. Uh, I, I will conclude about psychological torment. They have no clue of what it's like to be psychologically tormented. Uh, that, that's why, really, the, the, I, I grow in confidence. This will explain what I will do in the coming days because the people who think who run the world, uh, oh, we have power. <laughs> we'll see that. I'm not afraid of the politicians. I've understood this uh, because here I will not play the, the victim card because there are people who really suffer, but the people, the, 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 the intelligent people, the politicians, uh, etc. They really have no clue of what it's like to be tormented uh, psychologically, physically either, but psychologically. Because here, just an example, the politicians, I don't know what they think. Oh, if I make a mistake, uh, I will not be re-elected. Uh, maybe that's what they think. But what I think, what I have thought for many months, is that if I fail to speak the proper word, it will bring about a catastrophe and uh, hundreds of people, I mean, with all the countless of millions of others, they, they will be haunted, uh, and I probably will. But that's why I have been so reluctant to speak ordinarily, because I think that if I make a mistake, if I do not speak as rigorously as Hegel uh, by speaking in purely logical terms, I will bring about some sort of a, of a disaster for every failed word. And this, uh, this doesn't come from insanity, this comes from my personal experience. And this is why in the coming days and weeks, I will become what people call arrogant, but I will try to be nonetheless good by antagonizing uh, the, the intelligent people because here I, I will not, I will maybe party play the victim card, but they have no clue of what it's like to be psychologically tormented by God, eventually. And maybe I deserve this, but if it's me against me, that's my problem, but eventually there are people who, yeah, but that's why uh, there, there is really a cosmic misunderstanding, uh, a cosmic misunderstanding, uh, really. 
this explains why there would be weird events uh, in, in the coming uh, days and weeks uh, or my videos and eventually in the coming weeks uh, there will be weird events because uh, because I am recovering my mind as, as God that the 3% uh, 97% theory namely 3% of my mind is God and that's what I think, the 97 remaining percent, this is my empirical self, and I am partly embarrassing, but while being, while experience myself as being completely dumb and incompetent and, and a failure and, and being mediocre and kind of pathetic and grotesque and etc., I still, I am realizing that even with all my limitations as an empirical individual, I am still way uh, smarter than, than than, than most people in terms of intellectual content because I'm smart enough to understand yeah, there are many aspects of life in which I'm completely stupid but on ter in terms of pure intellect even while being a complete idiot in comparison with God, maybe I'm still way smarter than, than most people uh, if not all people who think that they are smart intellectually that's why I, I will appear as being very arrogant but actually here it's not arrogant it's simply... Uh, yeah, so the, 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 yeah. And that's where American common sense uh, has helped me, uh, has helped me uh, a lot, and most notably this book, because I have various selves. Uh, there's the psychological self, there's the, the philosophical self, the scientific self, the empirical self, uh, maybe the, 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 the creative self, I don't know. Yeah. Because one of my problems is that I have accumulated knowledge since 2013 my, my political awakening in 2016 my my real awakening namely uh, my right wing uh, awakening i have oh, accumulated a tremendous quantity of knowledge without ever sharing because i i never expected that i had enough anything interesting to share or because uh, whatever so i have accumulated knowledge and knowledge and knowledge while unconsciously thinking that most people my age, uh, who had degrees, I, I didn't think that they would, they, do, they did the same, but I just did not realize on a conscious level how smart I could be in comparison to others because I experienced myself as being dumb. And uh, when I have empirical conversations with intelligent people, on an intellectual level, when I dump down really to the basic, they still cannot follow and here it's kind of a Here I will speak normally, but this is the kind of thing that I experience as being a really traumatic. Like I, I agree, uh, I agree with a lot of people, mostly leftists, but for different reasons. Uh, for different reasons. I have the, the moment of mediation and they don't. In 
here, I, I, I will illustrate. I will be kind of negative, but when uh, white people, or, or let us just say white, when, when there are white leftists who say, white Americans have no culture. When they say this, and when I say this, we agree, apparently, but the problem is that I have the moment of mediation, namely, here, it's partly evil, but when I say white Americans have no culture, I've already said this, it's in, in comparison with the culture of Europe. But when I say it, I know vaguely that uh, no culture means uh, you incorporate uh, Emerson, uh, Thoreau, Melville, uh, Hawthorne, uh, Steinbeck, Hemingway, uh, Fitzgerald, uh, Edgar Allan Poe, uh, uh, Philip K. Dick, etc. Just a dozen of extra Jack London extraordinary writers that I know about broadly. And I know this is white American culture in a, in a matter of 150 years. And then you add the totality of modern pop culture, you add the scientific uh, expression of America, the, the physicists, the chemists, the biologists, you, you had you add the, the, the dozens and dozens of exceptional scientists. This is white American culture that the leftist claim does not exist. But when I say the white Americans have no culture, it's kind of provocative. But when I say this, it's kind of provocative while being serious because I have the standards of, of England and Germany and France, the standards of Europe to compare with. Namely, I have the, the, the moment of mediation and they don't. That's why there's a mis misunderstanding. And another, which is kind of maybe more tragic, maybe, uh, when the white leftists uh, they feel guilty uh, for uh, the, the harms, uh, the harm caused to, to non-whites through colonization, I do as well. But I have the moment of mediation of having experienced myself as being God uh, four years ago. And when I feel guilty about non-whites, the kind of guilt that I felt up until uh, recently that I, I said to myself, I'm sorry, uh, when, when I thought of myself as, as being kind of God, I said, I'm sorry to have created uh, your world, in a sense. I felt sorry for creation, not for colonization, but because colonization is part of creation, that that's why there is a misunderstanding uh, that I'm starting to, to recover my mind, uh, partly. Because I have, I have experienced myself some moment not knowing really who I am, what I am, because I don't really know what the negative is, but I felt guilty in a way for creation, uh, for, for the existence of the world, in a way, that, that I have experienced at some moments, that's maybe my, my insanity towards the end of August, uh, I said to myself, but creation is some sort of a catas catastrophe. Uh, that's what I thought, partly, at some moments. That's why there really is a misunderstanding, uh, I think. Uh, uh, yeah. Because I am <laughs> tormented by guilt. Which I partly deserve because they are really uh, embarrassing things uh, within reality. But uh, I have realized, hopefully uh, for good, over the past few weeks, that I, I, I had become excessive in the in the leftist, uh, ethno-masochistic, uh, uh, remorse, guilt uh, kind of way, in a sense that uh, 
I started to 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 to, to acknowledge that not everything is a failure. I, I've started to realize this over the past few weeks. That's why there is a misunderstanding. I will conclude on a, on a positive note. Uh, Lady Gaga uh, is not a failure, and uh, if I have to speak as some sort of a super cosmic father, or whatever, well, I might have pro I might have problems with uh, certain behavior, but. Uh, if if I had to start to think like a father, with a relationship with uh, my children in a way, which I don't know, it's really kind of vague, but uh, I would be I would be satisfied. I would not use the word proud because pride is a sin uh, from the Christian perspective. But actually, I will because <laughs> I would be I would be proud uh, in spite of all the because. Uh, because she's kind of amazing, but. Uh, The cause, here I talk to, to the real God, the cause of all my suffering and all my problems, uh, uh, partly how I envision this, is that uh, I experienced what I call love when I was a teenager, and then I experienced all sorts of uh, negative experiences which are caused by myself somehow. But I would like to be able to say uh, I love you to to others or not to all others at least not as of now but to some others. Some is important. That's the determination of the particular. Without. Uh, When I am alone, and when I can think more or less peacefully without the dialectical uh, switch in interplay or whatever, which uh, I, I know who I, I would like to be able to love without what I call the dialectic. Uh, uh, 
that's the problem is that the dialectic whatever an example is that on a conscious level on an empirical level up until a, a few months ago I didn't think that I would I would have something interesting to say I mean yeah with uh, some people but that I would I would be interesting eventually uh, when I express myself but now I, I'm intelligent enough to understand that even if I am gone uh, wherever uh, people f will find some of the things that I say interesting and the reason why they don't as of now it's not because what I say is not interesting is because maybe it's too complex or whatever I, I don't know o although I speak uh, really normally but now the, an example of the dialectic I believe that I had nothing interesting to say and by the time I realized okay maybe actually I have interesting things to say now it's probably too late I can still express myself for a few days maybe a few weeks but then so I will have talked alone uh, for years basically empirically and metaphysically but empirically I mean and uh, here I will just conclude that this exp whatever I am it explains maybe a lot about me I have been able to talk for five minutes with an English couple a few couple of months ago or a few weeks ago and just to be able to talk with English people of England but that's I would say that's bliss that's why I have the ambiguity in a way I admire immensely the English for their, their entire legacy just for being English that's my partly my uh, my my racist self <laughs> no seriously uh, but th that's why I admire immensely the English and even more the German I have been able to talk with German people that's amazing but at the same time that that what makes me a little bit insane because I think about the English of England or the Germans of Germany but you live with Germans you live with English people you can talk to them in your everyday life most of the life of most people of England consists in, in speaking with English people less and less with the demographic replacement at work but no, here it's a kind of a dubious joke but that's why I have maybe some problems because let us talk about the Americans briefly I, I try to share an extremely complex system uh, but Express, if I were to express myself really simply, maybe I should have begun with this. We live in an age where it's possible to talk with Americans in real time. I've never had the opportunity to talk with an American ex except through a written language, a few, uh, a few comments, but then I screwed everything up because I, maybe I was too honest and it backfired. But just this fact, to be able to talk to Americans and to people of all countries eventually but this is my frustration in saying that as of now at this moment I have yet been able to talk to any American person but if I could peacefully but precisely I can't because of the negative the process uh, pff, this is what makes me insane but I would say but you're an American you you, you live in America the the the, the I don't know what to say. Personally, I could speak for. Uh... And here's. Caroline can understand me. Maybe that's why I love you so much, uh, in spite of the suffering. 
because only you maybe uh, for on this specific topic maybe only you can understand me uh, I don't know but maybe this is pa partly the, the the ambiguity of whatever uh, This explains a lot in, in an intelligible language, namely, this explains first a lot because <laughs> the most amazing for me would be, but you're an American. I'm looking at the globe. There are other amazing countries. I could say the same about most countries. Honestly, I would. But Americans, they're kind of special. I mean, Germany as well, but. <laughs> You are an American. I could say to any empirical American, you are an American. You, you, you. So that's the first moment to pick up one group uh, against others. I mean, not against, but it separates from others. I would be less amazed. That's my, my negative self, but I could be as well. But yeah. Uh, Yeah, so that, that's the first moment. And the second would be, but... We could, if the ordinary, if it's an ordinary American with the... Yeah, I would be a little bit negative. The dysgenic processes, the welfare state, etc. Why does he have to be so negative all the time? <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, an ordinary American. The quality of the ordinary American has declined uh, significantly. Uh, that's a joke, that's a joke. I love you all, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, in a way, this is absolutely amazing. Just the fact of being able to talk potentially with with, with an, a person from another country, but especially America, but any other country, it would be the same with an English. That's amazing. And I am partly frustrated because and yeah, I understand. Uh, yeah, I'm smart enough to understand. There are people who live in, in, in countries, but it's not just America. The, the, the same goes for most countries. Uh, and They do not. Uh, they do not realize the the, the the. I don't know. The I don't know. And I can anticipate uh, eventually some people say, oh, oh, but empirically you are a Frenchman, and then I would say. I belong to Germany. <laughs> That's my problem, maybe. Or my solution, or both. I don't know. But if, if I were good, I would be amazed at the world constantly. The problem, the, here I re, I'm really serious, the problem is that I discovered that I was the negative, and then what am I, what am I supposed to say and to do? The experience of the world presupposes that I am the negative. So, of course, I hate myself partly for being the negative, but I do not understand why does it have to be so? Why can't I just be an ordinary person? Then they have an extremely complex metaphysical system.
here the, really the pathetic aspect of whatever I am is that I just would like to be able to have a normal, peaceful discussion with any person capable of holding a conversation, but especially about uh, foreigners in, in, in an English language, preferably American, white American, Oh, they no! <laughs> you were starting to to do to say nice things. Now you become racist again. No, that's a joke. That's a joke. No, seriously. Uh, but I know myself to be the negative, and this drives me insane, in a way. God lives in my mind, the, the three percent as I represent it. So this 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 super intelligent entity knows in real time what I think. But of course he he has my uh, bipolar self maybe he thinks way way too fast for me. I cannot follow the pace of the three percent or maybe it's zero point three percent and. Here I, I laugh, but I have suffered all day. And I will not play the victim card or I suffer, but I am scheming when, when I'm working, which today I have been lazy, partly, but because I've been so insane, but I am scheming constantly to do good. And my scheming consists in whenever I start to sound like a good person. <laughs> I feel compelled to introduce a little bit of <laughs> and God who is smarter than me he probably thinks I see what you're doing this is kind of pathetic and here I'm in a mood to laugh but There is the comical aspect sometimes, but here's the more American uh, aspect. Why don't you just kill me? Your punishment must be more severe. And here, I will say what God the real God which I am not obviously uh, not yet or whatever I will laugh, but I 
in a way, I guess, that the real God controls my emotions. And he knows that I find this embarrassing to <laughs> to show my emotions uh, in public or whatever, whatever. And that I try, of course, oh, uh, I have no problem laughing. I mean, I have no problem. My laughter will probably come back at me <laughs> at some moment. I can anticipate. I can anticipate. But. Uh, Probably I can anticipate that I have to show my emotions to the world at some moment Negative emotions Positive as well, I guess And I just would like to say but I would like to be left alone peacefully Solving all the problem. Here's my Zizekian self Solve all the world's problems so that whatever humans think I am or whatever they think they are just I it will probably not happen this way but it will not happen this way but I solve all your problems that I have caused I guess uh, unconsciously and, and then you leave me alone or with uh, my memories or with my uh, my spiritual family maybe peacefully and yeah i'm not uh, i here it's really the, the negative versus the substance i speak what i think because i know that soon in i don't know before the 25th of december <laughs> no i don't know when but uh, pr soon probably because i understand broadly that this is really the, the, maybe one of the last few videos where I speak alone uh, as the negative, uh, whatever. Uh, this is what I have thought as the negative, whatever this means. I mean, I understand that I am recovering my mind and that I keep Re reconnecting the dots so I keep making errors because I misjudge people and then at some moment I will, I will remind myself or re be reminded but they, they are parts of me and I forgot or I whatever whatever The pathetic aspect, pathetic here in in the I would say the noble sense, in the classical sense, namely that which uh, brings uh, pathos, not pathetic. I mean, it it can mean uh, derogatory, but here pathetic in the classical sense is that on a conscious level, on a conscious level, and there's the subconscious, uh, the higher self maybe, but I try to do good. Because because for sense of self worth and self respect that uh, and I understood uh, recently a few weeks ago that I am forced in a way these are my contradictions to to lie to deceive, I mean, I already knew, and to to betray uh, parts of myself. And, uh, yeah. 
I have consciously chosen uh, the English language as uh, my mode of public expression uh, almost constantly and as long as I can express my myself publicly uh, I guess that I will speak in English until uh, if I spoke uh, French I could uh, a lot easier, but precisely I choose here the difficulty not of uh, out of uh, a misplaced sense of self righteousness, as they call this, but because really I understood now I'm sure that uh, I have to talk to the Americans basically. The metaphysical principles, not to say principle, implies what in psychiatric term is called insanity. It's, it's part of self-healing to understand that just uh, the, the idea that at, at some metaphysical level there's only one woman, it doesn't solve the problems but it kind of appease uh, partly uh, my my soul may be to say that uh, yeah yeah this is a problem that uh, yeah and uh, also the, the people that are the most like me in terms of intellectual development uh, they, they partly suffer from uh, psychiatric issues uh, or yeah so I try to cure myself intellectually and to cure others maybe and I study logic although it's partly a scene uh, to, to, to read books uh, whatever at this point but uh, I, I, I partly study logic uh, although I don't really but because it really helps solve a lot of problems because the idea that I cannot be completely negative because it has to be balanced by the positive, it has helped me a lot. The idea of quantitative determination, when I think about really negative aspects of reality, I balance by saying, okay, it's quantitatively limited. And uh, now uh, negative relation to self, uh, it explains a lot, psychiatry, Attraction, repulsion. Yeah. And my my plan, I mean one of my plans, my, my hope, I don't know, is simply here to good and evil at the same time, to steal others' freedom. I just want humans to acknowledge uh, that they are not free uh, just so that uh, They can blame me, and uh, that's my good Christian self, maybe. I'm trying to solve people's problems, which are probably my problems, by using uh, logical categories. And I will just conclude with a, a positive because a positive remark because my, my day has been mostly negative. The intelligence of the entity 
that we call God, the, the real God, it's not even the 3%, it's maybe the, the 0.3%, whatever. Uh, I don't know how it's a uh, I don't know what to say. The level of intelligence. sense of I think about the, 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 the history of philosophy <clears throat> I've been spontaneously attracted by uh, <clears throat> the idealist uh, tradition, Plato, the Neoplatonist, Spinoza, Hegel, who, the, the, just the names that I've mentioned, I could have added Leibniz, but especially Plato, the Neoplatonist, Spinoza and Hegel, they have in common that they have thought about God as, and there are others as well, but they are the most uh, prominent representative as, as a pure intellect. Not only that, but the intellect is a moment of God, whereas in the religious views or uh, the views of other philosophers, of course, there's the moral aspect. It's important, but to, to, to remind maybe uh, others that God is a, a, an intellect. And here I have been partly angry against atheists at some moments, that's my arrogant self, but pff, honestly, uh, the level of complexity. Uh, pff, here I'm in a mood to laugh about Mr. Dawkins uh, and the theologians. Uh, uh, the theologians say God is very simple, and Dawkins says, uh, well, I can believe anything, but I don't believe that God is simple. <laughs> I will conclude on a positive note in this sense. At least of as of now, but even when I suffer, I love God because I'm, I'm I've spent most of my day uh, becoming insane, but the intelligence but the problem is that no one perceives through the intellect the intelligence. Even I don't most of the time, but when I do, without the negative aspect of dialectics, oh, but dialectics is nothing but negativity. <laughs> That's a joke for me and Hagel. No, but seriously, <laughs> the intellect here is really where if people have watched this, I don't know when they watch it, they will realize that here in my mind, I have never read Plato or the Neoplatonist or even Spinoza, I mean partly, but for me, I make them dialogue in my mind without ever having read them, but I just get the idea, as I say. And here is when I played Plato against Hagar, because in Plato, 
Of course, in the Parmenides, there is the dialectic, but there is just the, 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 the nous from Anaxagoras, the pure intellect. And when there is the pure intellect without the kind of dialectic, I understand myself, it's just... Uh, is just wonderful in a way and the people that since my intellectual development since my, my, since my teenage years actually that I, I can say I love the most they have many qualities but they most most of them share in common an amazing intelligence and whatever I say I cannot deny this and uh, it says a lot about me as well that the people that I admire or love the most they are not just intelligent they have moral qualities as well but predominantly their, their main characteristic is intelligence brilliance I will end by <laughs> talking to the substance. I have stopped reading Hegel uh, many, I mean, I read the logic, but the, the other books, uh, pff, I don't want to read these books. I know that somehow I have to die, but survive my own death. I don't, on an empirical level, I don't know what will happen. But my uh, my purpose uh, consciously is that uh, bef before I die, uh, whether it's happen, it happens uh, next week or in the coming weeks or I don't know month. I don't know at this point. I don't know. I will I will struggle. I struggle for many reasons, but consciously for um, I, I, I I I I want the the. the the Hyperboreans to to watch at least some of my videos and and to to, to answer at least uh, they hear at least a, a, a part of my point of view. I know who I think about the four people, eventually the others as well. But the four people that I I know have gone through the same cosmic car wash, one might say, or 
phenomenological process. And this also explains, in case it's not clear, but eventually if people spend uh, two and uh, almost three hours listening to... They, when they do, if they do, it, they, it will probably be clear. But at this moment in time, I am frustrated because here I will be uh, good, uh, maybe positive. There are these amazing people that if I could peacefully talk with them, that would be fantastic and great and... But I can't, precisely, I can't. Not yet, or maybe, I don't know. And this is what this is one of the things that, which drives me insane, because... I try to cure my insanity by working hard, which I haven't done today, but yeah. Ordering my thoughts, so I, co I compensate the insanity produced by conceptual fanaticism with more conceptual fanaticism. But then I asked myself, if I have to really to lower down, to dump down, to simplify, just to talk ordinarily, what's the point of... That's why he, he, when I think like this, I say, oh no, I have invested uh, everything almost in, in uh, my system, as I call this. I will not give up uh, now on the system until uh, someone else uh, gets the idea. That's the story that I tell myself, that others eventually, they will improve my system because the system has to improve itself. That's how I envision things. We'll see if this is how it works or... I, I really hear it's really scientific, uh, the negative, what do you have to say uh, to the substance? <laughs> That's why I talk when I say empirical people the people, if I say, you are an empirical person, they say, no, no, I'm a human being. I have a life, etc. Yeah, but for me, for years, you have been, uh, whoever you are, you have been just an empirical person. This creates a misunderstanding. Because sometimes I'm skeptical about empiricism, and then the, the empirical people, they can say, let's be skeptical about <laughs> your empirical... That's what I've been trying to say. That's why I share my address, etc., etc., if you want to refute uh, my empirical uh, aspect, uh, I give my uh, myself to science. You can study me, whatever, whatever. For the sake of science. This is just, uh, this is just ludicrous, ludicrous. <laughs> I laugh, but uh, this is ludicrous, ludicrous. <laughs> I laugh because it's it's really a. Uh, God lives in my mind, 3%, let us say, and and par paradoxically, I am, on an empirical level, I am 97%, that's just numbers, it's just to illustrate. I'm 97% of my consciousness, but actually these 97%, they are only 3%, so I am ignorant of...
does it still record the sound? Oh, this is kind of a, yeah. I will sleep and then I will I will do my my usual uh, business and then I will I will I will work but. I will work. I wrote calm, work, order, discipline. keep working the famous uh, work of the negative maybe <laughs> yeah to bring order 